working in CMYK mode. So color modes are just mathematical algorithms that computers use to calculate and manage the color you see in your monitor. So when we determine um, our color model, um, we, we basically think what's the output going to be. So in Illustrator, we have two color modes. So a color mode determines the color model used to either display Illustrator or to print those Illustrator documents. So we have two, and you remember when we go to File and New, when we're in the new document dialog box, if you would expand the advanced here, we have the color mode of CMYK and RGB. And we remember that RGB is for light emitting devices. It's an additive color process. So that means it's for anything that's going to stay in digital form. CMYK is the subtractive color process and it's for anything that's really going to be printed, printed offset color printing. We can test RGB and this is kind of a fun thing to do if you just kind of flick a little um, droplet of water onto your monitor you'll actually see the red, the green, and the blue because that's what's uh, how we produce those millions of colors in RGB. And CMYK is typically, traditionally, from the four color process printing. So let's go ahead and look at a CMYK document here. So I have some colors here and I wanted to show, um, I created boxes and I held down my Alt key to make duplications with them all selected. I went to align and I made sure that I was aligning to my selection and I distributed them equally and made sure that their tops were vertically aligned. Then I went ahead and filled each one. The first one with um, cyan. The second one with, let's make the fill be on top, magenta, and the last one with yellow. And so 100% cyan, 100% magenta, 100% yellow. I wanted to share with you though, because I know this happens to you, that you have um, a black stroke on objects. And instead of having to click each one to take it away, you select the whole group. But what happens then is you end up with a question mark here. What that means is that your multiple objects have different fills, but they all share the common stroke of black. So even though you get something weird here, you still can click on your stroke and change it for them all. Now if I were to click on the little question mark, I would change the color for them all and I don't want to do that. So when we're dealing with um, CMYK colors, um, it's basically those range of colors that can be printed. And we typically get colors that we would say are out of gamut. Out of gamut means that there's a, there's a range of colors that can be printed in this color model, or there's a range of colors that can be displayed in a given model, and now this color is out of that. So I'll show you if I take my fill and double click, and I could do this either on my tool or over here on color. Double click to open my color picker. And if I enter a number here such as 189, 100 in the saturation, 100 brightness, so I entered the HSB, which is another way of mixing color, I know that this color will trigger two things up here. This first one is my out of gamut warning. So that means that this color cannot be printed. Now our monitor offers 16 plus million colors, lots of colors. Our human eye has even a wider gamut than any mad made uh, met method for reproducing color. So our human eye has the greatest range and then we would go down to RGB, then we would go down to CMYK. So CMYK, like I said, has a smaller gamut. So a lot of times you will get this little warning here and it's called the out of gamut warning. It's right here. It's the little triangle with the explanation point in there um, indicating that this is not a color that can be printed. Typically the colors, if I'm mixing colors in RGB, it's those um, colors that are more on the brighter end, the more saturated, the more vibrant hues, just have more difficulty being printed.
Now, there are also um, colors that um, are not web safe, and that's what the second out of gamut warning is telling me. It's the three dimensional cube saying that this is out of web color. It's not a web safe color. So to correct either one of those, I could just click right here, and it's usually a slight change that will uh, move it to then being in gamut. And so I see those warnings up here in my color panel as well. And if I, you know, slightly drag, you probably um, find that I could get another gamut. Oh, I'm not going to get one. Um, but I still have this out of web. Um, for whatever reason, that's stuck up there. It's not liking these colors at all. All right, so that's the out of gamut. The um, tints basically are percentages of CMYK colors. And if you're going to mix a tint, think lighter, the smaller, um, darker tint, the larger numbers. If I have something where uh, maybe I, I start out with um, this color, where I have 100, 100, 0, 0, um, and I want to create a tint of this color. I'm going to drag out a copy here to show you. So a tint is a percentage. If I have multiple numbers over here, I have to stay with that same percentage and reducing each CMYK number. So in this case, my, my original color is 100, 100, 0, 0. A tint of this could be 50, 50, 0, 0. So in the CMYK world, if you're going to create a lighter version of your color, which is called a tint, you're going to vary these percentages, but it has to be the same percentage um, equally down. So this, I reduced it 50%. You could reduce it 25% or 75% or 13%. If you really struggle with the tints, um, it might be a good idea to get yourself a tint book. Um, they produce books that actually give you all those tints. There's a lot of resources online for tints as well. Um, if you're not good with the math, get the old calculator out and figure out your percentage. So um, if I would have done something odd like 50 and 55, that's not a true tint. Um, you have to stay consistent with that breakdown. So that's CMYK mode, um, dealing with CMYK color mode versus the RGB color mode. Just remember, if you're working in CMYK intended to be uh, to, for print, always test. Um, you never know what the printer is going to print. In the past, people spent big bucks on calibration software, basically sell, uh, software that would make their monitors be consistent and what they print be consistent. And it kind of has gone away because it's, it's really a wasted uh, time and money to, to calibrate because everything is so different and it's really out of control. So um, know that you need to test your CMYK. Don't just send something to the printer and print out 200 copies without seeing a proof of it first um, because you can find that there are some color areas that will change a lot. So CMYK color mode.